So you want to learn how to paint portraits? Great! Well, you're going to need a few things. I'm going to keep this quick and simple and tell you the things that are absolutely necessary. I don't want you to have to go out as a beginner to oil painting and buy a bunch of stuff that you just don't need. If you've ever walked into an art store, or even if you're looking at products online, it can be overwhelming. All the cool stuff that you see hanging in front of you in the art store can be tempting, but truly, what exactly do you need, especially if you're a beginner to oil painting? I don't want you to feel confused and worried about the products that you're going to need. So today I'm gonna to break it down and keep it simple. Okay, brushes. You're gonna need a few brushes to put the paint on the canvas, obviously. So here's what I recommend. I will have you getting three different kinds of brushes. So these are rounds, and round just is a basic uh, paintbrush. It comes to a point, pretty much. And you want to get these in sizes two, four, six. If, and if you can afford to have two of each size, that's ideal. I like to have one for my lighter colors, one for my darker colors, so I don't have to keep cleaning them off and I can just paint without too much thinking. <laughs> I have to think about other things that so are way more important. And then the other type of brush I like is called a flat. And what that is, is it's just a sort of a rectangular flat shaped bristle. And I like these in different sizes. Some are larger. Sometimes your brushes are long handled. Sometimes they're short handled. It's just uh, whatever preference, whatever suits you. And you want to get these in different sizes as well. I recommend two, four, six, and 10 in sizes. But you just want a nice variety. My must have secret weapon brush. I refer to these as combers because they're basically like little combs. The hairs have gaps in them. I don't know if you can see those. They're pretty inexpensive. It's a Princeton Select, and they call their combers a granier. These are um, given in sizes by inches. So this is a half inch granier. This is a quarter inch granier. Uh, I recommend those two sizes. If you can get other sizes, then go ahead, but those two are good. And they make the most beautiful brush strokes especially in the type of expressive painting that we're gonna be doing, I just love them. So there is an optional brush I recommend having in your kit, and that is the fan brush. It's shaped like a little fan. You're gonna need an easel. So I recommend if you don't already have one that the tabletop version is perfect. It's inexpensive, uh, it just folds up, you can put it away. And it'll sit on the table, you can put your canvas, right on there, sits like that, it's perfect. You can put your, if you're using an iPad, right next to it, you could set the tabletop easel up next to your computer monitor so you can view the lesson right next to the, the canvas that you're working on. Maybe you already have a French easel, these are great, they collapse, put away underneath the bed, somewhere out of the way when you're not using it. Or maybe you have a floor stand easel like this one here, they're large, it just stays ready to go in my studio. So that's it, that's your easel. So you're going to need a palette. What I recommend is a square, plain piece of glass. Uh, what I have here is an 11 by 11 square piece of glass that I just lay on top of a simple piece of gray cardboard. It's not too dark and it's not too light. On the value scale, it's probably a value three, four in that area. And this gives you a nice neutral surface to mix your paint on. You can put it on the table right next to your tabletop easel. If you want something a little more uh, advanced, you can go a little bit bigger. This is 13 by 13 inch square piece of glass, and it's secured to a music stand with a clamp. And I spray painted the back gray, and then I have the front plain, and that just sits on the music stand, and I just clamp it so that it's sturdy and then that can stand next to my larger easel. But there's also another option. If you have no music stand, but you have a nice big floor easel, you can put the uh, palette right next to your canvas, like so, so that you're working side by side. So 
So you're mixing your paints here and working there. So those are some options for palettes. Uh, if you don't want to get a glass palette, there is a canvas pad for palettes. You um, order it on Amazon. It comes like a pad of paper. You mix your paints for the day on one, tear it off, throw it away. Easy peasy. So that's an inexpensive way and a quick way to get a palette. You're going to need a palette knife. I uh, want you to get a diamond shaped head. A metal palette knife is what I recommend. They do come in plastic, but the metal one will last you forever. You're gonna need a roll of paper towels. And I also like to have on hand old t-shirt material that I can just cut up and use as needed. Okay, going to need a proportion tool. Uh, they're very inexpensive, like $12, $14. I'll have a link for it in your PDF that you download for the supply list. What I use this for is one-to-one -one measuring. So for instance, you have your reference image up on the computer screen and you want to compare, say, the inside of the eyes to the computer screen and you know what you have on the computer screen is what you have on your canvas. Proportion tool must have. So you're gonna need a couple of canvases, 12 by 12 square canvas. This comes in a two pack and it creates a beautiful uh, portrait. I love the square format. I use it a lot. And we're also going to be using a Centurion oil primed panel. These are oil primed so you cannot paint with acrylic or watercolor on these, only oil paints. I recommend canvas pads for an inexpensive option to the canvases and the panels. You're going to need a few mediums. I'm going to try to keep it as simple as possible. I don't want to have you trying to get anything you don't absolutely need to have. Going to need walnut oil. I use M. Graham and Company. Going to need some jars. And you want your jar to have a lid that can be put on tightly because in that jar, you're going to need to get your Gamsol. And Gamsol is an odorless mineral spirit and uh, doesn't have any bad smell, but I still like to put it in the glass jar and when I'm not using it, keep the lid on nice and tight. With the, the walnut oil, there's something very important that you need to know. The rags that you use these oils on, when put into a garbage can, they can spontaneously combust. So, do not want to have to worry about that. What I recommend is that you have a little garbage can like so, fill it to about right here with water. When you're finished using, if it's a rag or a paper towel, you throw it into the bucket with the water. And at the end of the day, if you've got it pretty full, or I may go for a day or two before I end up dumping this into a regular trash bag and taking it out to my outside trash to be removed. So there you have it, the supplies you need to begin oil painting. And if you're looking for a little extra help and some instruction along the way, you can go to sjcportraitcourse.com. Here you'll find a nice selection of portrait courses to choose from and even a free course on how to start your portraits. So I hope that helped and happy painting.